This week on The Anxious Truth, we're going to do something a little bit different. I have a special guest on, and we're going to talk about the topic of spirituality and recovery, which I've never done before. So let's get going. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Anxious Truth. This is podcast episode number 212, 212 recorded in May of 2022. Uh, if you are new to the podcast, I am Drew Lynn Salata, creator and host of The Anxious Truth. This is the podcast where we talk about all things anxiety, anxiety disorders, and recovery. So if you're struggling with things like panic disorder or agoraphobia, then this is the place for you. Welcome. If you are a returning listener or viewer on YouTube, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. This week, we are joined by a special guest, my friend Josh Fletcher, psychotherapist from the UK, Anxiety Josh, on Instagram and everywhere else on the internet. Uh, Josh and I usually get together and talk about very mechanical, technical, exposure -y type stuff when it comes to recovery. But today, we decided we wanted to do something a little different. We're going to address the topic of spirituality in recovery. Spirituality, faith, what they are, what they aren't, how you can use them. It was a really good discussion. I think you're going to enjoy it. So um, hang on for that. But before we get to Josh, uh, I just want to remind you that The Anxious Truth is more than just this podcast episode. There's a ton of more stuff. There are three really good books on anxiety and anxiety recovery that I've written that appear to be helping a lot of people. Uh, there is my morning newsletter, email newsletter and podcast called The Anxious Morning. There are 200 and somewhat other podcast episodes, and there's all my social media stuff, all of that you can find at theanxioustruth.com. It's all there. And again, if you are enjoying my work and I'm helping you in some way and you want to find a way to help keep it free of ads and sponsorships, all the ways to support this work can be found at theanxioustruth.com slash support. So go check that out. Never required, always appreciated. I appreciate all of you guys and all of your support and the time that you spend with me. So let's get going with the interview with Josh. It was really good. I hope you're going to like it as much as I like doing it. And I will come back at the end to wrap it up and give you all the links and all the details. Let's go. All right. I told you Josh Fletcher was here. Here he is right next to me, right, ne right next to me. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, we originally recorded three minutes of probably the most perfect audio and video you've ever seen, mm -hmm. but Drew forgot to actually press record. So now I'm going to purposely provide the, the dullest three minutes that you've ever had. Um, so yeah, and uh, I was about to reveal the, the one secret to overcome anxiety as well, but I spy, I'm just not going to do that now. So. <laughs> See, I blew it. Josh was going to solve everyone's problems in one fell swoop, and I forgot to hit the record button. That happens. <laughs> In my yeah. <laughs> it's not Obvi me. obviously i'm joking <laughs> my bad anyway uh josh is here even though he is dealing with COVID, and i appreciate you taking the time and i'm glad you're you're hanging in there with that yeah no i just i'm just, the only thing that's getting me through is my sense of altruism selflessness and outstanding modesty so yeah I can't. yeah yeah <laughs> funniest thing i heard from you was like well i'm doing okay just that i've been reminded of my the, my lack of immortality and it's <laughs> Damaging to Josh's ego to see that he's not immortal. <laughs> I was scared this morning. I woke up really like quite unwell. I was really scared and panicky. I was like, oh, God. I bet. And then a few hours later, I was like, I'm fine again. There we go. It'll be all right. <laughs> it's a roller coaster, but I'm glad you're okay, upright enough, and, and taking the time today. I appreciate it. So normally when Josh and I are on camera together or have mics queued up together, it's really technical and dry and exposure and willful tolerancy. Today is not so much. We're going to talk about spirituality and all its meanings and amorphous ideas and opinions and gut feelings, which is something we don't normally go into together, which is great. But I'm excited to do that because I never get to do that. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about the role of spirituality and recovery and anxiety and how it all relates and what it might mean to each of us, which is probably different for every human being walking the planet in some nuanced way. So what would you call spirituality, Josh? What, what do you think it is? Um, spirituality is a very vague um, a broad concept and it's quite vague and it's specific to each individual uh, its origins are from uh, religion uh, so you can have very secular spirituality catholic spirituality but all forms of spirituality across um, all religious beliefs but it's not necessarily exclusive to religion there's a huge uh, modern movement of kind of atheist spirituality um, uh, and kind of nature, spirituality, whatever. Um, it involves the recogni recognition of a feeling or a sense of belief that there's something greater than myself, um, <laughs> believe it or not, something more to be human than sensory experience, that the greater whole of which we are part of is kind of either divine or cosmic in nature, depending on your belief. Um, I 
often have sprinklings of spirituality in my life, particularly when I was overcoming anxiety disorders. Um, and it's important to understand what the difference is between utilizing spirituality, whether you're, uh, whether it derives from your rel religion or, or whatever belief system that you have in your life. If you, you can use kind of spirituality, if you choose to, it's not essential, but if you choose to, to help give you a push to overcoming horrible, sticky, disordered anxiety. And, uh, and I'll share some examples with you through this episode, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious to see how it kind of fit in with you. I agree with you on that definition. I think it has to do with, more than anything else, connecting with something that is bigger than us. And what that is, is up to everybody, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's always interesting because, and this took me a long time in my life to kind of figure, reach this conclusion that spirituality and faith could be two completely different things. Like there, it, for some people, they are completely linked and they are one and the same. You can't take them apart. And for others, they have nothing to do with each other. And I, and I feel like I kind of fall into that category. But the belief that there is there is something greater that we can't necessarily see or understand or, or even maybe interact with, who knows, but it's there. Yeah, and when you look at it from 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 an anxiety disorder perspective, and this is all I'm going to look at. It. I mean, we don't want to, I don't, we, we're not going to get into kind of so, so, Sophocles versus St. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter in a, in, a, in a rap battle. About, of, or, no, what we're going to look at is, how it applies to anxiety so and, and this is just for me learning from my clients and stuff so people come into my practice people of faith people that use grief spiritual things like for me spirituality is something anything that's kind of metaphysical something that doesn't make rational sense but helps you get over the line you know so for me spirituality was drawing upon grief i am not particularly religious but during times when I was struggling with anxiety and struggling to draw upon some strength and courage to do the things that scare me, sometimes me, I alone wasn't enough. I felt, mm, you know, what, what, what can it take me today to get out and do something? And it would be things like, you know, do, do it for your loved ones who aren't here. Uh, I did it for my brother who's no longer here anymore. I did it for my father who's no longer here for. And, yeah, empirically, to the bystander, it looks stupid. It doesn't make sense. I'm stood there. I'm scared. And I think of family members that aren't here physically. Mm. And yet, for somehow, metaphysically, it gave me the encouragement to do it. Yeah. I don't believe that they were stood there, really. I'm not necessarily, but there was something that I drew upon from the, the spiritual realm that, that helped me do it. And if that isn't spirituality, then I don't know what is. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, and I love that. And and and, it, and they drag me out of some nasty, nasty places sometimes. I, you know, the good, the thing that I love is when you said it doesn't it doesn't make sense or it's not empirical, but it doesn't have to. That's the beauty part of this. I think it doesn't have to make sense. Nobody has to agree with you. Nobody has to believe you. Nobody you can't don't have to prove it. There's no data. It doesn't matter. It's just mm. whatever it means to you in that moment. Um, and, and there, that can be a source of strength or motivation or encouragement or, you know, when, and look, we all struggle. We have those really hard days when it feels like it's just not getting any better and you don't want to do this anymore. Sometimes those, those spiritual things, those things that don't make any sense whatsoever, except in your gut or in your heart can be important factors. And I think they are, they were for me in much the same way. I would say we, we have a, it sounds like we have a very similar experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It, I mean, I would, I would argue it's it's spiritual to help your future self. Mm. I'm not doing this for me. Maybe I don't like myself at the moment, but I'll help up my future self. Yeah, you know, um, it, it's spiritual to if you are a faith is to you know, actually, you know what? As 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 long as I'm asking for help in a spiritual way, f help for me to do the scary thing then that's perfectly fine. When you're asking and, and delving into kind of spirituality and religion to help you take away the scariness, then it, you go into compulsion territory. And I work a lot with um, clients like that who, who bring faith here. And it's like, well, f you know, from a psychoeducation point of view, that's absolutely fine to do that, to help pray and stuff. But pray for courage because you need to do it. And I think you can utilize spirituality in that way. Um, 
and it can help you through it. Honestly, it's it's you know it's uh, it's fascinating. It, basically, this is going to sound really dry and boring, but like you can use spirituality as a tool. You know, here he goes again talking about tools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not dry. I mean, it's not boring in any way. It might be dry, but it's certainly not boring. I, for me, it was a huge tool, and I had a. An, oh, he said huge tool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we are here for it so uh, go edit that out <laughs> you go ahead and add. no i'm gonna leave that in um i i think for me and i had such issues with those sticky intrusive thoughts about death and existence and annihilation and all. it was those i was really crippled by that for a very long time and i searched desperately i did that thing where i was searching for certainty in a thing that we can't find certain we don't know we're never gonna know we have an entire department working on that since we became sentient and we haven't figured it out yet it's called philosophy so what made me think i was going to do it but I did find meaning in an explanation that sort of sounds like group consciousness. I don't want to go into the details because it's not up to anybody to care what I think or me to care what they think. But and that helped me because it brought me to the idea that like, oh, no, this is my job. This is my responsibility to live this the best way I possibly can today. And that might suck. But this is my responsibility as part of that sort of collective. If we're all part of this. collective, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it really helped me in a big way. To this day, I still find some comfort in that. I don't know if I'm 100% aligned with it from a belief standpoint, but at the moment, it was a tremendous source of not calming, I think, but but strength. This is my job. This is I have to. This is not why, just because. So let me just because that's it. That's what I have to do. Because. Well, I think we're very similar in the fact that we we you and 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 many people will be where it's okay to use a spiritual element for when you are feeling vulnerable to give you the courage it's really important though to realize and you know me i always bang on about this i've said it in previous episodes with you and if it's on my podcast or yours it's you you got to make sure that you are getting the credit mm -hmm. you know uh, and it's so important and you know it, you went to these these things you you went found this group you delved into that and it gave you the courage and strength to define your own path and then you did it whereas there's a big difference between going somewhere and asking them to take away the pain give me the the certainty give give me all the reassurance i need tell me everything's going to be okay 100% for the rest of my life no anxiety disorders love that yeah. uh uh, and, and I know I've been there and as someone who, you know, I grew up in a very religious family. Well, one half of, the, of it was, and it's been like, uh, no, we don't, we don't need to kind of, you need to be the one that's doing it. And, and, it, and it's lovely and you can use things to help you, but ultimately you have to be getting the credit for it. So if that's any religion, things like that, I also want to talk about like, if you're looking at the broad spectrum of spirituality, there's lots of spirituality in like nature and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and for all the like the nerds and the empiricists, like, you know, you've got the look at the the data of people like be you know walking forest bathing, walking in nature, to walk and talk therapy stuff like that. Being in and around nature, the data shows you that it's just profoundly brilliant for your brain and your happiness and whatever um how i don't know some people interpret that as well there's a tree and it's giving me oxygen some people interpret that as you know there's something quite spiritual about being in, in, in a forest being something that's older than me living on a planet where, in the way it's supposed to be but the yeah that, though, it's, it doesn't matter why or why yeah. you think it is. just enjoy the benefit yeah or just yeah. really like trees <laughs> i'm a huge tree fan i'm a, I'm a fan <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, yeah, there is. I may get that. There's certainly there's a lot of data that shows, you know, that that is tremendously helpful. But who cares why? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe it's spiritual. Maybe there's a maybe there's some divine intervention there. Who knows? Maybe it's just a primal connection to things older than us. Who, who cares? It works. Yeah. I mean, if you're hugging a tree and you can feel it pulsing through you and it's making you happy. You had no judgment from me. That's great. I, yeah. You get envy. <laughs> you get nothing but envy. Fair. Uh, That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Just... It'll be a better day today. Um, <laughs> no, I'm with you on that. And the, the who gets the credit is so important, so important, because I think, and I wrote about that when I was writing the Anxious Truth. Because then my community, it's always I, look. I first of all, everybody that's listening, I have such tremendous respect for, for all these people because we sometimes have that conversation in my community, and it's always 
so respectful and so kind and so compassionate and so just an open exchange of ideas. It never devolves into you have to believe what I said. And I just huge kudos to everybody for being such good human beings. But I, I felt like I had to address it. And that to me, in my view of a faith based view, in my experience, it was like, well, if if there is a creator or some divine being that that you believe is there and that helps you, that's great. But it, he, she, them gave me these tools. Mm-hmm. And I felt it's smart part of my responsibility is to use those tools, not to just ask that power to take it away. But I do mm-hmm. understand that some people do feel that the right way to do this is to simply hand it to something bigger. But yeah. this is a tough one for people like you and me, though, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just, hand it, just hand it off and it, that will get better. Yeah, a lot of people, there's, there's blocks to people accepting that it, that it was them that did it. Like, you're allowed, there's no... It's not being selfish or overly self-congratulatory to, to say that you did it. It's essential. It's mandatory in, in my and Drew's opinion. Yeah. Like if you want to recover, it's got to be you. Uh, I hear a lot of, um, and you must hear this a lot, Drew, like, oh, I, I did the scary thing. I went to the movie theater and then I drove 30 miles to see my aunt. Thank God I got there. And, and, and I'd usually reframe that with like, well, if you're really religious, you know, I thank God for giving you the tools exactly for you deciding to go there. Yeah. You know? uh, and, and it's like it, it just subtle reframes like that. And if you're someone who wants to pass the, the, the credit onto someone else or who wants to give it all to something else, just be selective with what you are giving because you deserve credit too. It's you. Yeah. You no, know? it's, it, it's you. Don't get me wrong. I, every, anything can get credit indirectly family friends faith religion mm-hmm. support network yeah. uh, much needed medication you know things can get indirect credit but ultimately it's built around you and just make sure you're doing that you know your spirituality is a tool for that for you yeah. to access it but it was always you it's important i think not not to delve too deep into this because it can get a little bit sticky but you know, I don't think that that's a denial of one's faith. I think it's an affirmation, to be honest with you. And I think oh. there are plenty of people, I think, listening to us today that struggle with that. And I know because they've been open and really brave about talking about it in some instances, that the idea that that I can't just give it away and it's not getting better, I have to do something. It feels like a betrayal of the faith in some yeah. instances. And Absolutely. I and I get that. And sometimes they're told it's a betrayal of the faith. So I, I think if nothing else to, to acknowledge in this conversation that sometimes that spirituality and faith, if they're one of the same for some people, can create a crisis in recovery. It's, and it's a real crisis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I hear that a lot. And then obviously you include people with OCD who have religious scrupulosity as a theme yep. where they feel guilty and stuff like that. I mean, if you're, if you're one of them listening now, you know, don't get me wrong, we, we see you, so good. You know, you're not a bad person, all these things. Yeah, it's about it's about getting your ducks in order. You know, you're not getting rid of them. Just get it in order and see what's actually happening as opposed to, you know, I just, I, by me not giving 100% of everything to something else, I'm being a bad person. No, you're, you're allowed to have your autonomy. And again, we won't get too much into it, but if you look at the basis of a lot of, religion it's about celebrating your autonomy yeah. whilst living in a in a culture of appreciation and praise that's a lot of kind of religious structure you're allowed your autonomy yeah i think it's a big deal and for nothing else than to acknowledge that if you're if you're a little bit in that crisis and feeling between a rock and a hard place because of maybe what you you believe and and why that's not working for you then at least hey look we, we get it there's a place at the table here for you to work that through if, however way you have to do that I think it's the best we could say about that. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But anyway, so I'm sorry. I kind of derailed that just a little bit. It's all right. You wanted, you wanted to crack at theology, didn't you? You wanted to be spicy. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm never here to take a swipe at anybody's faith. I guess I don't get to do that. That's no, no, I, absolutely not. And I've seen it. I think the important thing is it doesn't matter what your faith is or whatever your spiritual belief is you can recover 
just make sure it becomes an aid, not a hindrance. You know, yeah. you don't want to compulsively pray in the middle of a panic attack because then you don't get the credit for tolerating the panic attack. If you need to pray, pray before and pray after. You know, pray for the help that it was the courage that you had to do that. If you're part of some kind of alternative spirituality, you know, and you want to thank the earth, that's great. Do it before and after. But if you're going through intense anxiety, it's got to be you that, yeah. that does it. And I'll just do what I did. Like, I remember, like, I had to go into a hospital once, terrified. And I just kind of spoke to my my deceased family members. And I was like, which was ironic, considering I was walking into a hospital. And they were just, yeah, I just, I just spoke out loud and just wanted to believe that they were there with me. And that just that wanting, that faith was enough to kind of get me into the hospital. Don't get me wrong. I still believed it was me that went into the hospital. But? But I, there was just that element that was there. Yeah, you know, and and there's just you do you, you do see these little things, and it's it's about your interpretation as well. Like I I've had weird things happen to me, weird spiritual stuff that that just doesn't have an explanation, and I'm like, cool, I'm I'm not even going to question it. I'm just going to yeah, take it, take it and run with it. Why not take it and run with it exactly? And um, yeah. I just think it was important that we spoke we spoke about this, uh, Drew, because you know a lot of people do have that kind of spiritual element. Yes, we're not. I don't think we'll be writing a book on it anytime soon, but it was nice just to have two people who can be very cut and dry with the approach to just talk about th this topic. Let's take a, a couple of minutes. Maybe, you know what? Let me just shut the lid on this other Mac though, because it's talking to me and it's making me crazy. So hang on. <laughs> there is no other Mac. He's thinks, having a spiritual experience. He thinks it's helping me by trying to set up with voice assist. Like, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, one of the things that I do want to touch on a little bit is, and it's interesting because faith-based spirituality can get a little bit dicey. We talked about that, but that's just faith. And we've all said, you don't have to prove it and nobody has to believe you. Nobody has to agree with you, which is great. There's another side of spirituality that I think you've hinted at a little bit, like nature-based, cosmically based. And sometimes that could get dicey because sometimes that camp does claim that it is real. And there is science. And if you vibrate at the proper frequency and look, quantum mechanics says that if you do it this way and that can get, that's another thing that can create problems for people in our community. I think that's a form of spirituality, I think. And that form of spirituality, I'll just say it, fuck it. We're in, we're in that mode now. It gets, it can get super toxic more so than almost any church because of the, oh no, this is science. This is truth. Like quantum, I read about quantum mechanics in HuffPo and it said that we vibrate. And so if you vibrate at the right frequency, you will overcome your anxiety. Um, yeah, you've got to, you've got to be careful when, when there's a red flag's always wave when there's either a fatalistic tone to these things or an accusatory tone. So for some people it'd be like, you're anxious because you're not vibrating at the right frequency or whatever, or mercury's in retrograde or whatever if you want to be that kind of spirituality that's okay but when it becomes accusatory mm -hmm. uh, and when it implies that it's something that you're not doing on a way that hasn't really kind of there is no science or then that's a huge red flag and you've got to take a step back and kind of look at that critically yeah um there's a lot of people out there that will use that to exploit you they'll get on their soapbox and say things like you know use things that, that will resonate with you and then and then talk absolute shite and get you to think that you know to, to start to subscribe to what they're they're saying yeah um it's very and, overly prescriptive also yeah it, it is and, it, and it, a, a lot of it relies on you just assuming that the teacher is right there's no there's no there's nothing really to back it up you know, um, when a lot of these kind of toxic communities, don't get me wrong. I know people that are, that, that use it to, again in here. I, I've seen it before. I've known people sure. that use it to an advantage. I'm not here just to slaughter it, but it depends on your, um, your relationship with it. So for example, I had a client in here and he's like, you know what? I, I waited to, to this day because I knew that this day 
my forgive me this is probably insulting if they ever hear this but you know the um you know everything was aligned everything in the co- in my astrology was aligned and today was the day that i felt confident to go and challenge magrophobia and they did Great. and actually they used it as a stepping stone and you know yeah. i wasn't sitting there going you know what you know, I'm I'm going to try and dismiss you. I was like, well, if it worked, it worked, and I'm I'm not going to even question it. If that worked, then I'm not even going to dismiss. Maybe it did. Maybe for you in your universe and your phenomenology, yeah. your phenomenological experience, that's what was required, and that's great. You know, um, but but when it becomes a a case of <laughs> you're anxious because of your inner werewolf is being shot by a demigod circulating the third moon around mercury shut up man you're just talking nonsense <laughs> yeah and i've seen that and again not, i don't want to skewer it because it's true it can also be a very useful framework like anything else i think that's fine um but yeah it can get a little bit nasty too when you get in that so i've had people who will literally argue with me no 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 it's the, the mercury retrograde and i don't understand any of it i will completely 100 percent own that i'm i'm clueless as to what the logic behind that would be but no, that you don't understand the reason why I'm having panic attacks is because of that. And that seems, but, but no, that's, that gives away all of your influence and all of your power. Uh, so it's, it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, I could sort of imply that. I'll say it, Drew. You can but, placate. I don't yeah. give a shit. It's yeah. bullshit. You're I not don't. having panic attacks because Mercury is in retrograde. Yeah. You're not. It's not what it is. Maybe, no. well, actually, no, I'll tell that back. Maybe you could be. Maybe your belief. Yeah, that's and what your, I was going to say. Your fear of fear yeah. might trigger him because someone has suggested to you that. Yep. And yep. so the next time Mercury is in retrograde or another thing, I know it's very rudimentary. And again, apologies for anyone who, who's into that. I don't read, them, uh, read about it a lot. Right. But yeah, that could trigger panic. But the very suggestion and the association that you have with it triggers panic. But it's not nothing to do with where... The actual location of a celestial body. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I, I hear you. On that. But again, it could be a useful tool, and I've seen it be the same as you. I've seen people use it to great success to yeah. help make them to give this, them a little bit. This of is the time. This is the yeah. time I changed my life. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and this is the time we're waiting for. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen that happen, and I applaud. I think it's fantastic. And I think you in know. the end, I, I've seen people, you know, do smudging and burn sage and do all of those things. And I might not do those, but if that brings you a sense of, if it puts you on a firm base that you can jump off from. What's smudging? You never heard of smudging? I just learned no. that not too long ago. Smudging is, I think it's, it might be the sage burning. It's called smudging when you just, you circulate the the, the sage smoke or the herb smoke. All right. Again, I, I would I, owning my ignorance. I don't understand the purpose of it necessarily, but I know plenty of people who engage in that sort of thing. And it does, it gives them a little bit of a more stable base to jump off from and it works. So why would yeah. I say not to do that? Then? And, and, and a shout as well, the personal experience, shout out to people who do like Reiki and stuff like that. My sure. mom does Reiki and things like that. Uh, and uh, do you know what's really nice about it? She like she wants to practice her Reiki on me because she's tra- she's trained in it and stuff. I don't necessarily believe in it, but I'll go around and do it. You know what? What's really nice is that it's a nice hour with my mum. I feel right. super relaxed. I'm not thinking about work. And actually, that's quite spiritual in itself. It's just really nice to sit there close to my mum. And, you know, she feels a connection to me. I'm lying there snoring. It's really lovely. Um, and even I think that that's lovely. I think that's really lovely. I just no, think, I... yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm not here to knock it at all. No, uh, happy side effects. And, it, you know, who cares what the benefit is? But in the end of this benefit, go for it. So I think, you know, the takeaway, hopefully from all of this is spirituality doesn't have to be proven. It doesn't have to be argued. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to show me data. You know, if you find things that help you get to the point where you can take the action that you need to take, because you've been given the, the opportunity and the skills and the, the strength and the courage to do that, then, then great. And just, and then, you know, and I'll, I'll give Josh the last word here as the guest, but just don't let it become the, the explanation for why your life is changing. Mm. Because then, then you give away all the, because then if, if something changes down the road and it's outside of your control, it'll come, I have a relapse happened. It can come back. If, if this you, it was force. you that never got the credit for it. Right. Right. So just, Use it to give yourself that that's the base of strength, courage, motivation, whatever. And I'm here. yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I'll I'll share one of my weird spiritual moments with you. And 
Um, I remember not so long after after grief, uh, and I was struggling with the agoraphobia and panic and stuff like that. Uh, and I got onto an airplane to fly to Greece, and as it got, I was really scared. And as it got, you know, passed through the clouds, and, I was, and we were flying, I looked out through the clouds, uh, and this is sound really lame and weird, and it always does. But honestly, from my perspective, it was amazing. And I looked through the clouds, and I could, I honestly thought I could see some of my relatives that passed away in the clouds sounds really lame i know but i saw it i didn't even question it it probably helped that i had about two or three whiskeys before i got on the plane but it doesn't matter i'm not going to question it it was a beautiful moment uh and then i really nice holiday just things like that i just you know i can't i, I never i never knock it you know can't explain and, uh, it either. i'm you gonna get mocked for that aren't i I'm get, yeah. no <laughs> oh, definitely not. there's anxiety josh and his little cloud family oh bless you him. know what I, I would never mock that so I, i'll give you my own little 30 second when my grandma passed away my mom my mother's mom and i was very close to my my mother's parents and when my grandma passed away it was just there was three of us in the house she passed away in florida we're up in new york and there was only three of us in the house and i woke up the next morning and i was alone in the bedroom and no one, until they put me in a box, will tell me otherwise. I could smell the, the, the smell of the Sunday sauce, being from a big Italian-American family. That's what I grew up with on a Sunday. It, that smell was in my house. It was in the house. I laid there. I made sure I actually smelled it. I just laid in it for a few minutes. I got up. I got out of bed. I walked around the bedroom, and, and the smell was still there, as powerful as ever. That's amazing. And I opened the bedroom door, expect I get seen to the kitchen, expecting to see maybe because my mother was up from yeah. the bar at the time. Maybe she was in the kitchen. And the minute I opened the door, there was no one in the kitchen. The rest of the house was asleep and it was gone. Oh wow. In the worst moments that I, when I was struggling really hard and doing my exposure work, I would smell the smell of my grandfather's cigarettes. Do not tell me that I didn't. I can't wow. explain it, but those little were you moments. smoking your grandfather's cigarettes as you were doing the I never smoked a day in my life, but I, it was it was just like I was back in their house as a kid. Now that is a spiritual moment, and that's a lovely, wholesome yes. experience so, uh, to finish on. That's right. so lovely. Thank you for sharing that with me. Oh, well, thank you for sharing your cloud family with me. And I think <laughs> <laughs> and, and and if and if you've only just tuned in, the key to anxiety recovery is Sunday <laughs> sauce and find your dead relatives in the clouds above. And you're good to go. Have a love. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time. Where can everybody find you? I'm going to give everybody, this is episode 212, so you can go to theanxioustruth.com slash 212 to get all the links, but where, where can people hook up? 212 episode. Fact, That's uh, incredible. Uh, Anxiety Josh. There you go. You can find me. Anxiety everywhere. Josh. Yeah. Yeah, just Google Anxiety Josh. He will come up. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Spamming your inbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, my friend, thank you so much. I'll be back yes, in sir. a second into the studio, which is this very desk right here. We'll do the wrap up, but uh, and we'll have Josh on again. And I will say this, anybody listening that wants to participate in this discussion, I don't know, theology student, clergy member, somebody who has something to add, I'll, I'll come on with you. I don't know if Josh wants to join that one day, but that would be great. Let's yeah. see. Sounds good. I <laughs> Okay, we are back, just as I promised, here in the studio, which is the exact same place that I was three minutes ago, talking to my buddy Josh. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. I really, it really wasn't so much of an interview. It was just sort of an informal discussion, which is something that I don't do a lot. Most of my stuff is a little bit more technical, a little more dry and mechanical. So uh, I really enjoyed exploring that topic, and we'll do that a little bit more. And again, open invite for anybody who has a little bit more to add on this. Reach out um, if you're involved in the faith community or you are student of theology or philosophy, or you want to talk about some of that stuff, maybe we'll just do another episode to follow up. Josh is willing to come on and we'll all talk about it informally and exchange ideas. I think it's great. I love having discussions like that. So if you want to find more about Josh, uh, you can find him. He's Anxiety Josh on Instagram. Uh, his website is the School of Anxiety. Just go to the anxious truth.com slash 212 and I will have all of Josh's links in the show notes for this episode. And that is it for episode 212. You know it's over because music. That, as always, is Afterglow by Ben Drake. You can find Ben and his music at bendrakemusic.com. Go check him out because he's a great musician and a, just a good guy. Tell him I said hello if you do. Uh, and that's it for episode 212 of The Anxious Truth. Thank you for coming by and spending time with me. I'm going to ask you what I ask you every week, which is if you're listening on iTunes, Apple, or Spotify, any place where you can rate and review the podcast, take a minute and leave a five-star review. Even better, take an extra minute and write a short little review of the podcast so that Everybody else can find the podcast, and that's why we do this to reach as many people as we can. 
That's it. I am out. I will be back next week. As always, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I will be here. So remember, this is the way. It's in these feelings that you never show. Yeah, you're doing fine. It's all around you. You can breathe it in. And this is where your story begins. You got the feeling that you're going to win. Yeah, you're doing fine. Now in the city and you're living fast.